Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. Today we are starting a new video series called Wireless for Network Engineer. And what we are going to do, we are going to do two basic tasks. First is wireless controller install and then apply the base configuration so that our EWLC is available, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to deploy a virtual 9800, Cisco virtual 9800 controller on a hypervisor, right? So as you can see, I'm going ahead and creating a virtual machine. Uh, because virtual, it's a kind of virtual um, machine only. So let's name it and then you can download the OVA file from Cisco software uh, web page. All right, I'm going to name it EWLC. You can obviously select from your local desk, uh, desktop or you can do a, a drag and drop. So let me find my OVA and I'm going to drag it. As you can see, this is C9800CL. I mean the cloud version, right? and I'm going to install it in the same data store and deployment option. As you can see, there are three network NIC cards mapping by default comes from OVA script. So three NIC cards, one is for management, one is for uh, AP or data network, and the third you can use if you have redundant pair, right? So three NICs are available in cloud version by default. And then we can choose the deployment type. I'm going to choose the smallest one uh, to restrict this virtual machine. Uh, with the smallest resource requirement, 1K AP, 10K client, pretty uh, decent for my home environment, right? And this looks good. So this is the complete configuration or summary of the configuration. You can go ahead and deploy. So when you deploy a OVA file, it actually try to upload from uh, upload your software from your local machine to the hypervisor and then start deploying the virtual machine right so it will take some time because mostly the upload is the heaviest or time consuming part so i'm i pause the video and now you can see um we are going to log in log back in this is my hypervisor okay my ewlc is already deployed because i paused the video for some time right so it's just like spinning up a virtual machine. Now you can see virtual services. I have the by default V switch is zero and I'm going to add a new switch because I need two connection. One is management connection, which is VM network. And for data or AP VLAN, I'm going to create one another V switch and connect a different physical NIC or map a different physical NIC to this virtual switch, okay? So let me go ahead and create a new virtual switch. And I'm going to map that virtual switch, which I'm calling EWLC. Let's create a port group. So this port group, the new port group, EWLC, EWLC data, this is the my new port group that will be associated with this new virtual switch, right? So as you can see, now we have two virtual switch, virtual switch zero and virtual switch uh, e, uh, EWLC. One is serving management connection, which is going to map to my gig ethernet one. And the second is catering um, um, the data VLAN that will be mapped to EWLC virtual switch. Okay. So my EWLC, as you can see, this deployment is complete. And now we are going to, but it's not power on. So let's go ahead and edit the configuration so that we can do the proper mapping. Let's do the edit setting. Here you can see I have three network adapter and all by default, they all are mapped to the VM network, which is my management. So let's, let me map first to VM network, second to EWLC data, and third, I'm going to keep it disconnected because this is not a redundant environment. I have only one EWLC. So I essentially need two NICs, one for my management and second for my data. And these two virtual NICs are mapped to two different physical adapters. One is connected to my home network uh, or management network. And the second, it will be serving as a AP data VLAN. Okay. EWLC is, and now we are ready to power it on. Let's power it on. You can see the bootstrap in console. So as booting the software, and you will just booting just like a switch or a route, uh, mostly like a switch because it's a iOS XE software with wireless functionality. So 
once it boots we, then we are going to apply the base configuration so that we do not have to depend on vm console to access my wlc because that's not the best way to access right i want to enable remote access like ssh and other things so that's what we are going to do when we apply the base config but still as you can see it is booting it is booting with package.conf and it, these things happen uh, is going on by default as you power on your virtual machine and you can see instance booted in private cloud that mean uh, this is a cloud uh, ova and you are running it on own hypervisor there is another version like where you can deploy it in public cloud uh, and this 9800 cl is available in that public cloud like amazon and google cloud okay but here we downloaded it and deployed it on hypervisor that make it a private on-prem install all right it is unpa unpacking the software booting it and then we start seeing all the interfaces and the uh, processes okay Yeah, watching the install uh, boot is not very uh, interesting part of it but i want to show you the complete configuration how to do the initial configuration as you can see um, it will ask you to continue with auto boot but that's not what we want to do so we will uh, terminate the auto install and apply the base configuration manually okay you can see auto install trying dscp v4 uh, on vlan 1 as you put any uh, any input or from your keyboard the auto install process will be stopped so there is a plug and play functionality is there but we don't want to do that we want to and also we do not want to go in the initial configuration mode we just want to configure it apply the configuration uh, manually for the first time okay would you like to terminate auto install yes and this is you are in the um, config prompt now Okay, as you can see, line VLAN and other interfaces are coming up. There is no NTP signatures and uh, self-signed certificates getting created. And PNP discovery is stopped. Okay. You can run guest shell as well, but we will talk about that probably in advanced videos. Here is my prompt, WLC, the default host name, right? And now show IP interface brief, uh, just like any io 60 switch. You can see I have three interfaces and the VLAN one, which is the default VLAN, and it is in shutdown mode. Let's look at the default configuration real quick. VTP mode off and some um, self-signed certificates. Okay, uh, some class map, three interfaces. They all are up, but no IP address or anything assigned. Interface VLAN one is in shutdown state. Then line console and uh, auxiliary config what is interesting here you can see a lot of uh, wireless related config because this is not a switch this is a, a ios xe wireless controller and that's where you will see all those profile and wireless related um, information here all right now we will continue uh, to apply base config right so what we do want to do in a uh, for base config for now apply uh, IP address on a particular interface so that we and enable SSH. Uh, SSH is enabled by default, uh, but we'll make sure that it is SSH version 2 and other some basic housekeeping task. Uh, to convert the VTP mode from uh, off to transparent and a few basic configs so that we can access it remotely. But let's look at the config by default. The, this, this is the default config. What you are saying, I'm scrolling right now. And now let me bring up the base config what we are going to apply and as you can see uh, this is the base config we are going to apply which is host name uh, username obviously we want to do a remote login so you need to configure username and password then name server domain server vtp uh, mode uh, i'm going to create one vlan which is vlan 10 uh, and for now i'm not going to assign any ip address for vlan 10 that is my ap vlan and we will come back to that in later video for now just configure interface gig one and i'm going to ap uh, apply a ip address manually which is 192.168.1.250 which is my uh, vm network or the home network uh, and this is going to be used for management right so let's apply this configuration on interface gig one um, and uh, enable uh, login local on ssh because i do not have any uh, external tech access environment here um, uh, external authentication environment so let's apply this and then 
by once you apply that at that point of time the wlc will be available for remote access right now we apply the config from vm console which is a serial console right and too bad that you cannot do a copy paste from your local desktop to vm console so we need to hand type a few line of command here but once wlc is available for remote access then obviously you can copy paste and apply bulk configuration okay but the beauty of wlc is once the ui is available probably you may not have to log into the uh, cli at all you can everything you can do from the ui and apply uh, pro, create profiles and apply profiles right so host name username the be the most uh, few lines of basic config what we need right let's apply that and quickly access it on ssh username is gentech Password is in tech. IP name server, domain server. So once my wireless controller is available uh, remotely, then next task is we are going to create the hierarchy or do the WLC configuration so that my AP can join this WLC that is the end goal and then we will start uh, advertising few SSIDs uh, so that the end end clients they can join those SSID and talk among themselves and also reach outside the network so that's that's the thing we are going to uh, do um, that's our end goal okay interface gig 2 we will say this is the trunk vlan uh, trunk port and right now we are allowing only vlan 10 so this is a placeholder okay vlan 10 is going to be our ap vlan obviously when you apply uh, or allow the VLAN on the trunk port, you need to configure that VLAN um, locally on the switch. And IPSSH is enabled by default, but it's good practice to uh, enable version two. Let's enable the login on uh, TTY line which is vty telnet or ssh logins and I'm, so, I'm sorry it's going a little slow but i want you to see the minimum basic configuration what we are going to apply so that we can access it remotely right so sorry for slowing you down here but as we go to ui we can do things much faster and intelligently okay let's verify uh, so two things we are going to verify is UI and SSH. By default, EWLC listen on port 80 and 443. And as you have seen, I have already enabled SSH. All right. So let's verify UI and SSH. So that we do not have to come back to VM console. We can do everything remotely or from UI. All right, this is my terminal window. The same IP address, what we applied on um, interface giga, uh, gigabit ethernet one, that's the IP address we are going to use with the username uh, as Tech. Yes, we are logging in first time, so it is going to cache the fingerprint. Okay, apply the password, enter the password, and now you are into uh, as you have SSH into um, the EWLC. Okay, I'm sorry about uh, 
the alignment i think a uh, few things you cannot see on my screen i apologize for that uh, but as you can see we have created a vlan 10 which is ap vlan now let's go and access the ui so same username and password what do you use for ssh you are going to use the same username and password to log into the ui okay and the ui may may load may take some time as you can see you are at configuration setup wizard this is like initial configurations wizard and you can follow a uh, step by step and um, go uh, apply minimum basic configuration but this is not what we want to do we want to do uh, uh, go uh, skip this splash page and go to the main controller page how you can do here you do you you can see there is no skip uh, uh, option available so what you can do you have to set the ap country first on ewlc to get rid of this splash page so let's go ahead and set the ap access point country type first and to do that you may have to disable the radios 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz radios for first you have to shut them down set the ap country and then re-enable 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios and that's what I'm doing first, right? Uh, I have said no AP.11 uh, 2.4 gigahertz shirt. And then same thing for 5 gigahertz. And I've said AP country US, right? So wherever you are, you have to set the AP country. So that uh, controller know that where I am, what is my RRM and other uh, frequency parameters, okay? Once you set that, then go ahead and re-enable your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz radios okay and this time just say ap.11 no need to say no okay refresh it you'll see that splash page initial set of flat splash page is not reflecting anymore and you are into the controller dashboard okay here we are in the controller dashboard and it is a summary page as you can see uh, we can see how many wireless LAN, WLAN is there, how many access point, what is the utilization looks like. So right now there is no WLAN, no AP configuration, but we are interested in seeing the resource and other parameters. So you can see uh, host name, device uptime, boot image, uh, CPU uses, memory utilization, uh, the basic thing, or basic health of WLC controller, because right now nothing is configured, right, uh, other than the management network. And in following up video, we are going to configure all these pieces and make it a working controller for your home or office environment, right? Uh, there are a few tabs uh, and I'm going to list um, a video link in, in the description where I'm going to talk about, where I'm actually talking about all these different uh, tabs, dashboard, monitoring, configuration, etc. right? So feel free to I highly, highly advocate you to watch uh, that video so that you are familiar with the options here, okay? And then you can see uh, there are a couple of tabs on the app, which is like save configuration, go to home, change the preferences, how, what, what you are seeing here, everything you can customize. And at the same time, you can refresh, you can reboot uh, from the UI itself, right? And finally, if you want, you can lo uh, log out using that button on the type, right? And that this is also showing you the image which is 1733 at this point of time so in next uh, video we are going to configure uh, the ap vlan and let ap join uh, this controller and we will continue from there so thank you for watching